Hey, what's up everyone? It's your girl Brain Shanae. And today, um, pretty much today is Sunday. I think it's the 21st of February. And since I did a vlog for the uh, other two books, I thought I would do uh, do a vlog for this book. And this is a book that I'm also reading for the Black Author Readathon, which our live is on the 27th which um definitely join us for it and also if you want to participate go ahead and do that um, um but yeah i believe the last day for the black author readathon is technically the 28th but we're going to do our live show on a saturday so yeah just please join us if you can but i'll be reading the third book and final book of the brown sisters and that is act your age eve brown by talia hibbert I enjoyed the first two books. Like I said, I did a vlog for the first two, so I might as well do a vlog for this book. But yes, I am reading this for the Black Author Readathon. I'm not sure which which prompt I want to pretty much do this with. I know there's interracial romance, but I filled that out with um, Honey Girl that I currently finished um, reading, which I really loved. Um, so I don't know. I know this has a uh, like work workplace romance, which I do believe these two the two characters, two main characters, do end up working together in a way. So I might use that as the prompt for this book. I'm trying to read at least one book for each prompt, but I know I'm not going to be able to fill out the whole bingo bingo board. You know, so hopefully get a couple of bingos maybe instead of blacking black uh, entire blackout. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to be reading this book. Um, and this book is of course about the third and youngest sister, Eve Brown. And I'll go ahead and read the synopsis for you. And sorry about the noise, my uh, my uh, three-year-old son is playing right now in the background and then I have my other son right here just chilling. But yeah, so let's see. Uh, all right, let's see. So for the synopsis, it says, Eve Brown is a certified hot mess. No matter how hard she strives to do right, her life always goes horribly wrong. So she's given up trying. But when her personal brand of chaos ruins an expensive wedding, someone had to liberate those poor doves, her parents draw the line. It's time for Eve to grow up and prove herself, even though she's not entirely sure how. It says Jacob Wayne is in control, always. The bed and, bre uh, the bed and breakfast owner is, a, is on a mission to dominate the hospitality industry, and it, he expects nothing less than perfection. So when a purple-haired tornado of a woman turns up out of the blue to interview for his open chef position he tells her the brutal truth not a chance in hell then she hits him with her car supposedly by accident yeah right now his arm is broken his bnb is understaffed and the dangerously unpredictable eve is fluttering around trying to help before long he's infiltrated his work uh before long she's infiltrated his work his kitchen and his spare bedroom jacob hates everything about it or rather he should Sunny, chaotic, sunny, chaotic Eve is his natural born nemesis, but the longer these two enemies spend in close quarters, the more their animosity turns into something else. Like Eve, the heat between them is impossible to ignore and it's melting Jacob's frosty exterior. So there's also um, enemies to lovers prompt on the bingo board. So I don't know which one I'm gonna use, maybe enemies to lovers. Um, but yeah, I'm reading it currently. I'm gonna keep y'all updated on things that I like about the book. Some um, pretty much my reactions to some of the passages in the book that I do like or quotes or whatever. Um, so yeah, I think hopefully this can be like a fun vlog or my bookmark keeps falling out a fun vlog for you all um but yeah so yeah so stay tuned for more hey what's up everyone i know it's a little late for the update it's been really crazy today um on booktube and stuff like that i just don't want to get into it but anyhow um i have read this i'm only like 40 pages in uh where we mostly are introduced to eve and how eve is confronted by her parents um saying that she needs to get a stable job and that they will no longer make payments to her trust fund um and the reason why they're doing this is because eve doesn't stick to one thing she constantly quits she says she wants to do this and then she quits at it um and so they want her to have a stable job at least for her for a year um as well as have her own home um and then once she has her a job for at least a year then they'll be able they'll be um making uh payments they'll begin to make uh payments towards her trust fund again um but until that time they no longer are making payments for it so Eve is trying to figure out what is she's good at, what would she be interested in, interested in for a year, but also what type of career would um, pretty much help her pay bills as far as getting her own home because she does have a deadline when she has to move out of her parents' house. Um, and as of course, as her sisters 
um, Danny um, and also Chloe, they pretty much have a stable life. Um, Danny's organized. Um, Chloe has a list. She's also organized, whereas uh, as opposed to Eve, she's all over the place and not stable whatsoever. So with this book, that's where we are right now. She's trying to figure out, or not really, she's just trying to figure out what she could, what she wants to do for a year. And so she comes across um, something like maybe being a chef. And the other reason why she thinks of this is because it's something she's really good at. She likes making things, especially baking, um, mostly not really cooking necessarily. Um, so she's just driving one day. Now, mind you, it's she's taken her driving driving test at least four times. Um, and as you all know, getting your driving test can be so stressful. I was so thankful that I was able to pass my first time. Um, I took my test, my driver's test when I was 16 and I was able to pass my first time. Thank the Lord. Um, but yes, yeah, so as mind you, she's driving, trying to figure out what she wants to do. Then she comes across this small town where it has a B&B, a B B R B. B, &B a bed and breakfast and they are wanting a chef for this because there is a festival happening in their town um in the small town and um he she goes to the interview that she did not schedule for she's just going on a whim uh, and she meets Jacob uh, Jacob Wayne who is the um owner of the B, -R B, &B and he really does not like her right off the bat because she's just not organized. She came unannounced. She has purple hair. Um, she's not dressed for an interview. But his friend Montrose, who has been his chef um, in the meantime, but knows that he has to get back to his own restaurant and stuff like that. He's giving um, Eve the benefit of the doubt and wants to give Eve a, a try, a go, because she did offer to make something for them to pretty much convince them that she would be a great chef for the uh, bread and breakfast. Um, but Jacob wouldn't give her a try, um, wouldn't give her a go. He was just like downplaying her and just didn't like, and it, she, he just did not like her altogether. So as you can see, they're enemies already. But and so she just leaves interview and just struts out and leaves, you know, leaves um, the, the bed and breakfast because Jacob is being like a rude ass. He's being rude, like a rude ass person. Uh, and he has no chill. Um, but Eve, the one thing Mantra likes about Eve is her presence. And with um, bed and breakfast, uh, bed and breakfast um, type of establishment, they like, um, you know, the homey people, um, people, you know, making them feel like they're home and stuff like that, which Eve does give off, which Mantra's brought it up to Jacob about. So that's where I am right now. So they're about to, he, they're trying to chase her down before she completely leaves the uh, b and &B. Uh, the bed and breakfast um, and she is in the parking lot and that's when she pretty much hits Jacob with her car so that's where I am right now it's a really good I feel like the humor in this there's a lot more humor in this book than the other two the first two books and I'm just I'm loving Eve with her on um, spontane spontaneousness um and what she's doing you know trying to get a job trying to serve trying to survive because she no longer has her trust fund where she can just take money out whenever she wants to and then we have Jacob, who is just, like, rude and wants things to go his way and doesn't really think about anything else. So that is where I am right now in this book already. So I will say, like, when you read this book, it's really, there's action right off the, right, right off the bat. Like, you can, um, you can never, like, there's nothing stale or dull about this book at all. Like, it really gets to the nitty gritty of things and it puts you right into the action of Eve trying to figure everything out she meets Jacob everything so I'm loving it so far I'm sorry like I said I'm not keeping you updated throughout the the day like I said it's been a little bit crazy um I was mentally just not just not in it today um but yeah I felt like it's not fair to y'all so I want to at least keep going um and doing this vlog for you all regarding um actor age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbard but like I said it's really good so far I have no complaints um but I'm about to go to bed um my son is asleep um I might read a little bit more pages just a little bit more um and then i'm just gonna go to bed but yeah that is my update for today and i will keep y'all posted tomorrow morning everyone it is the 22nd of february i just got up um and my daughter just finished her little um online classes this morning um so we're pretty much just chilling on the couch my daughter's on her tablet my son's watching true on netflix i really don't know what this whole 
whole like TV shows about, but it's cute and he likes it. <laughs> but um, I'm still reading this. I'm at the point where after she hits Jacob with her car, um, Mont pretty much is asking Eve to watch over the um, bed and breakfast for them as they head to the hospital and find out what you know what was damaged if he broke his leg um but they do uh, seem to know that he has a concussion which i think he does too since he's been delirious and he's talking about eve's boobs and how big they are and yeah so he's just staring at them um so that's where we are where i am right now in this book um and they have mont which is for short for montrose uh, so Mont and Jacob just uh, finally came back from the hospital and are right, and they are now at the um, bed and breakfast right now. Um, so that is where I am right now. Um, and Eve is pretty much giving a description of what Jacob looks like after the fact of getting hit by her car. <laughs> um, so yeah, and just she just has a big description of him and about his hair, what it looked like before and after. So that is where I am right now. I'm only on page 58. I'm going to try to get to at least page 100 and then um, read a little bit more tonight up to at least get to page 200. That is the goal because I have other books I want to read um, for the Black Author Readathon before it is over or at least have it all the books I want read um, on the 27th or, you know, before pretty much the live show. Um, so that is where I am right now. So I will keep y'all posted. Um, also, I probably will be going out to today um, just to get some things and just to get out of the house for a little bit. I know the kids are tired of being in house all the time, which is why when when I have a moment and when my husband's not at work, we try to do things, at least get out of the house, visit my mom or my mother-in-law or my cousins and what have you, just to, for the kids not to be so bored because, you know, covid is a hot mess and it's still out there it's still affecting people a lot of people are still dying and stuff so I'm just very protective over them over my children which I would think is understandable you know um but yeah so far so good I will keep y'all posted hey what's up everyone long time no see um sorry if I'm whispering my son over here is knocked out you can hear him snoring and he's literally just six months old and this is how hard he snores um <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I am really enjoying this book so far. Like I said, I was at the point where, um, Eve had hit Jacob with her car and then we're in the aftermath of pretty much Montrose giving her a trial run, um, as far as, um, having, like, staying put at the, um, b, &B and, um, you know, pretty much handling it, managing it while they're gone. Um, and Jacob had no idea about this because he was concussed. He had a concussion. So as the morning comes, of course, um, Jacob has is in bed. He's asleep. Um, and, you know, Eve thinking, Eve's thinking that um, Jacob knows that she is going to be there working pretty much because she thinks she already has a job, um, sort of, so, so to speak. Um, so in the morning, she actually starts cooking for um, the guest at the um, bed and breakfast and everything goes well. Um, she's even having confidence in herself about it. Usually she gets tired of a thing where she, you know, she gives up on it or she just quits altogether, which is eve for sure like even her sisters say like you're just you're you're eve this is what you do you know you try something and you just give up when you just are bored with it but she actually was enjoying enjoying it as far as cooking and everything and listening to music as she was cooking and of course jacob approaches and he's like what are you doing he's and she's like i'm cooking breakfast for the guests and he's like i didn't hire you well yes you did you know mantra said and that's when he got all upset about it in his feelings and of course, Jacob Ari in his head says he does not like Eve at all. Um, but I feel like soon enough they start they they start coming around, and even Eve starts to have these feelings for Jacob already, especially about his body, and um, even says like the outline of his package, <laughs> which is like stated in the book. That's verbatim what it says, um, and yeah, I'm really liking it. It's it's definitely really cute. Um, 
so of course Eve um, pretty much is making breakfast for Jacob and then of course Jacob likes it and he says you're you're officially hired this is what you need to do your next task is um to get ready for afternoon tea and make uh, desserts and everything which she also loves to do she loves to bake on top of that um she really doesn't think she's really strong when it comes to cooking but I I feel like she is um and but baking is her specialty that's what she stated in the book um, and that's where, where we are right now. And also, he doesn't know that she is lodging there um, in the spare bedroom. Um, and Jacob does not know about it, which I'm sure he's going to find out um, uh, sooner rather than later in the book. Um, so yeah, so everything is really fast paced with this book. I, like I said before, it is really, it's not slow at all. Um, with Talia Hibbert, she's just a great writer. I just love her writing. It's beautiful. It's funny. There's so, so much humor that I really just enjoy. Um, but yeah, I'm loving it. I'm at this point right now. I'm trying to get to the second bookmark, which to get to page at least 200 tonight. That's my goal. I've just been, my mind has been elsewhere with everything. Um, and I'm trying to just stay focused on my on my goals and everything and get ready for the Black Author Readathon. Um, because this is my first live that I've, I, I'm um, a host for and I want this to be a great experience you know so I'm just trying to um have some pos you know some positive vibes I'm um, just trying to be more positive get you know shine some light on a uh, celebrating not only Black History Month but also uplifting um black authors um because they're their books are amazing and ever since I was a little girl that's what I've been raised to do is always read um, black authors and their books and always support them which I do I do on a regular basis and then I will continue doing so um, but yeah so like I said I'm loving this book so much Talia Hibbert you are amazing with what you do as far as romance <laughs> that's just amazing um, I'm looking forward to more of her works, but I'm definitely sad that the Brown Sisters, um, pretty much the story of the, the Brown Sisters is ending with this book, but who knows, maybe Talia has something up her sleeve that we just don't know about. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to give you a little update. It is literally like 10 o'clock today, 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. in Columbus, Ohio, where I am, where I live, if you don't know that. Um, um, but yeah, that is my little update for now. Um yeah so i will definitely keep y'all posted in the morning um you'll probably see you know my daughter doing her online learning um me get at least getting my son some breakfast he's going to be down here too i have to try to keep him quiet um and then my my baby my six month i put him upstairs in his bassinet um so that way there is a little bit more quiet because sometimes he gets really he gets really upset in the mornings he's very cranky for a six month old so yeah so that's where i am right now um, but yeah, so stay tuned for more. Morning, everyone. Today is the 23rd and pretty much I fell asleep while I was reading. So I didn't really get to the page where I wanted to get to. I literally got to like page, let me see. I got to page like 150. I didn't even get to page 200. So yeah, so I'm trying to catch up as much as I can and go from there. Um, my daughter just finished her little online learning. So yeah, so I really don't have an update just yet, but I will keep you posted once I um, start reading a little bit this morning. But yeah, so have a good day y'all and um, I will keep y'all posted in a little bit. All right, everyone. So I am farther along for actor age Eve Brown and you know how Jacob, like Jacob could not stand Eve for nothing. Um, and so for that, I think it's just really interesting because now he's starting to have feelings for her um, and he doesn't want to. He's just trying to deny his feelings for Eve and everything like that. But Eve is really surprising him as well because he sees her working really hard and she's dedicated. Um, and he he noticed that that's really not her and that she can be like a princess is what he had said in the book um which he's trying to get away from that type of thing you know what i mean just trying to um yeah get away from that light as being the brat and not falling through with everything you know because throughout eve's life um she's been known her in her family to not um finish anything and always give up on anything and really never tries to 
you know to fulfill what she already tried what she started or to finish what she started and so um jacob has since has since that and he even told her i was like you know what you have this position and all i want you to do is try that's all i want you to do is just try which i do love about jacob he does not want to give up on eve because he sees her potential and eve also sees her potential and also notices jacob as not always um an arrogant person he actually has he's actually pretty cool and everything like that and it's funny because there's a moment in the book where Eve falls into a pond and Jacob's right there to help her and, and everything like that, which I thought was very romantic. Um, and Eve is starting to just notice things about Jacob, about how he seems to be this person who's always talking about professionalism and everything like that and just always strict. Um, but he really isn't like that. He's actually a cool person to be around and to work with. Um, so that, like I said, that is where I am right now. Um, I'm currently still reading more um, into the book as they go into talking about um, getting ready for the gingerbread festival, um, uh, which um, Eve is pretty much going to be cooking and for that alone. And there's going to be pretty much advertisements for the um, bed and breakfast that's going to be affiliated with this festival so that um jacob can, ha can have more exposure and more business with his um his bed of, uh, bed and breakfast um and so eve is just making sure that she does her due her due diligence and also just try to make the best out of this event that he's been wanting for a long time for his bed and breakfast so like i said that is where i am right now and i'm looking forward um into knowing more about jacob oh yeah also there's another thing about jacob as we start to realize that he is adopted um by his aunt because um he was adopted when he was 10 years old and his parents were constantly travel they're travelers they like to travel everywhere and jacob just did not like that and his also he like when he was expected to read he did not know how to read and i feel like that's not his fault but his parents felt like that was like he should automatically know how to read and but the thing is you have to take the time in with your children to read at least try to read to them at night every night which i do with my daughter um so yeah we learned about that about him and um after eve learning that out and finding that out about jacob i think she feels even more closer to him um than she did previously um but yeah that is my update for now i will keep that posted later on as i keep reading this amazing book what's up everyone so i wanted to give you an update on my reading it is like around like probably 10 o'clock at night um, Eastern Standard Time if you did not know and I am loving the dynamic between Eve and Jacob and usually the little gestures that Eve does for Jacob Jacob truly wants to be her friend but he's now thinking of being more than just her friend he's picturing her picturing kissing her and stuff like that but then again he also thinks of the professional fact of the matter is that he is, um, she is his chef and they work together and he keeps bringing up the motion of consent and everything like that and it just would be hectic and he didn't want to claim, usually for him when he kisses a woman that he likes, he claims her as his own, but eventually, sorry that's my son, but eventually he feels like that same woman is not going to stay and they're going to leave, they're not permanent. And so he, I feel like he, is thinking about committing to Eve but he doesn't want to step into that type of situation he wants to be more professional since they are working together um but I know that has to be a hard thing especially when you're working together and you actually are, are working together in the same business or whatever and it can be difficult to you know rather like maybe they sh they shouldn't work maybe in order for them to work together I should like fire her you know and or whatever just so that we could be together but that would hurt Eve and he doesn't want to do that so instead of him um he's putting his emotions aside and trying to be professional about it but as for eve she i could tell he's having feelings for her uh, eve is having feelings for him as well i'm um, doing these little gestures singing and stuff like that um so it's very cute like i said i love the night the dynamic and like literally jacob is really like really having like feelings for eve to the point like he wants to kiss her and like constantly looking at her boobs and everything like that her body he just loves her body and who she is and 
and explain to her that she does matter but he also lets her know when her bratness when her brattiness comes out and he reminds her about that and she's like oh, okay i got you i got you i'm sorry and goes right back to normal but yeah so that's my update for uh for now but i will keep y'all posted in the morning so see y'all morning everyone so i am trying i'm about to start reading um actor age eve brown um Hi. my kids are with me downstairs uh, my daughter just got done with school and they're playing doctor with Hi. me so you can see them. they're both you're playing are you checking my heartbeat yes and we're checking your good eyes oh you're using and you're checking my I'm pulse I'm 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 are you checking my heartbeat? You should be. Why are you? Why are you laying on me if you check my heartbeat? I need help. I need to check you. Uh, but yeah, so I have a hundred pages left for the book, and what I can say is like it's really, really funny. Like so, Eve did a little gesture with Jacob, cleaned up the room that she was in, and made it more homey and stuff like that. And, you know, they were just talking, just being friends, right? And she kept asking, so are we friends? And she was like, are we, are we friends? So I guess they're friends. But then it sort of got, there was sexual tension. And next thing you know, like, Jacob is sitting, like, sitting on her dildo. Like, I'm like, oh, my gosh. And then he just looks at it. And Eve was like, okay, maybe you should put that down. And he was like, so you've been doing this when you, like, are right, this room is right next to mine? Like, seriously? I just, it's crazy, right? So, um, so that was really interesting. And then she's like, yeah, I named it uh, M'Baku, which M'Baku is the character from Black Panther. And, and mostly he's known for him being big, right? <laughs> so I thought that was hilarious. Next thing you know, uh, after they have sexual tension and there's some oral sex involved, um, he pretty much says, okay, there, you're going to, now it's time that you, you move out, you get your own space and what have you. And I think that like, that would piss me off if after you have sexual encounters with me, with me and you say stuff like that, you know what I mean? And so that's what happened to Eve. Eve was very upset with his response and everything. And it was just, oh, you're doing my hair. And it was just, she was not expecting that. And I wouldn't expect that either, either. And I would feel like offended by that. Like, seriously? And then he, and then after, after the fact, he talks about like professionalism and stuff. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, and that's how Eve was pretty much reacting. Like, okay, fine. I'll move out, whatever. Um, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, that is the point where I am at now in the book. I have, like I said, a hundred pages left. So I'm trying to see what else happens as far as their relationship and what, what they are or what they want to be. So yeah. So stay tuned for more. All right, y'all. I'm going to keep it 100 with you. I had to get myself together before <laughs> updating y'all on some stuff. So literally, I have like 70 pages left to read in this book because I plan on finishing it tonight. Um, and I definitely will be giving you my thoughts on the book once I'm finished. But I just wanted to give y'all a quick update. Um, so it is later on during the night. Um, usually, if you haven't noticed, I read during the night because that's when everyone is sleeping. I try to read throughout the day. Um, so, but I usually don't get as much reading done as I do at night. Um, but anyways, um, I'm at the point where Jacob and Eve do, uh, actually eventually do have sex with one another. Um, it's a very, it's very steamy. I, I feel like, I feel like I should say very steamy for real. Um, I would definitely give it as, uh, Steph would, would say maybe, maybe three, three steam fans maybe I don't know <laughs> um but yeah it really like that scene was who I had to I had to get myself back together because that was just a scene that was nothing like how it was written it was very passionate the, the sex that, that we're having it was passionate it was it seemed like it was love and so at this point in the book I'm at the point where Eve is trying to figure out if if she loves Jacob or not um, so she asked, she asked her sister, she asked Chloe, uh, specifically, like, hold on, I'll actually just read the passage because she's really trying to find out, does she love Jacob or is she scared to love him? Um, so it says, um, she says, so, um, so in this passage, it says, hello, I have a question that requires only answers, no nosy questions in return. Thank you. How does one know when, when one is really in love? 
For example, in Beauty and the Beast, how did Belle know she was in love with the Beast and not just Stockholm Syndrome? Or Chloe, how did you know you were in love with Red and not just with and not just his excellent hair? Oh, or Danny, how did you know you were in love with Zaf and not just his excellent hair? Yes, that question. That's my question. Danica, please respond. Satisf satisfied, she sent the message. It took a moment for blue ticks and jumping dots to appear, but once they did respond, once they did, responses were fired in quick successions. So for Danny, she responds. Her response says, "I didn't know I was in love with Zaf. Remember, you told me." And then Chloe responds and says, I find this question infinitely suspicious. Who is Stockholm syndroming you? And then Eve rolled her eyes and sent back no one. It was a, theor a theoretical comparison. And then Danny says, okay, but who are you in love with? So yeah, so it's just Eve's trying to figure out, like, she's trying to figure out how does she know she loves him? And I feel like that's a one thing that we all have in common as far as trying to find love. We're trying to like see like how do we know we love this person? How we know they are the one? How do we know that you want to you want to spend the rest of their life you want to spend the rest of your life with them? And I feel like that's a great question that I feel like everybody asks. Um, but yeah, this book, it just got really steamy and I really am respecting Eve. She's coming into herself, she's having confidence in what she does. It's just a lot that I feel like Eve is learning about herself and how she's loving um, where she's at. And she loves the little town um, that she's in um, as she's since she's the chef of of a um, of a bed and breakfast. And she just loves the little town. She's I, I feel like she does love Jacob. It's just she doesn't want to say she loves him, but she doesn't know if she is in love with him in a way, I guess you could say. Um but also like like let me read I want to read another passage but I don't want to spoil it sorry that's my my little six month son he's like my buddy at night when I'm reading um but yeah it's like I want to read another passage when it comes to pretty much her progress and what she has done throughout the book as finding herself um and everything like that but it says um, let me see. It says, after two weeks, no way, no fucking way. And yet, by the time Eve finished in the office, carried herself back to her bed, back to her bedroom, and put on the aforementioned fluffy pajamas, that soft but strong emotion hadn't gone away. It wasn't that the idea of loving Jacob bothered her. Actually, when she thought about it, she caught herself grinning so hard, her cheeks ached and her eyes squinted and her ears sort of popped, and she felt a bit loopy, like she could fall back against the bed with a film film worthy sigh and do nothing but moon over his very excellent qualities for the next nine hundred hours. And it says, but there's also a part of her, small but loud and rather fierce, that insisted she be reasonable, rational, adult. She couldn't she couldn't possibly be in love with Jacob already. It was silly. It was reckless. It was the very definition of immature, absolute evidence that she was making bad choices yet again. Only when she tried to think of Jacob as a mistake, she came up against an impenetrable, we a pen impenetrable wall in her mind that cut off such a sacrilegious path completely. Um, in the end, she decided to do as, G as Gigi had advised, because when attempting to adult, there was no harm in requesting a little assistance. So that's when uh, that passage I share with you, where she pretty much asks, you know, ask her sisters for advice and asking them, like, how did they know that they love their, signif their significant other? So that's where I am right now. Um, pretty much when I'm done with this book, I'll give you an update on what I absolutely thought of the book. And then go from there, or I might just what I will do. I might, I might update y'all tomorrow. I feel like I want to keep it. Once I read it, I want to evaluate on it. You know, have my mind pondering about what I read and really think about what I thought of the book. So I might just do that. So I'm gonna finish reading it tonight, and then tomorrow you'll get my pretty much my review on what I thought of the book as a whole. Um, sorry my son is making these crazy noises <laughs> i don't know why he does this um but yeah so that's what i'll do tonight read the book finish the book then you will get my full update and my my all my thoughts of the book and everything my review all my ratings and what i give it, what i give the book um but yeah so i hope you all have a great night hey what's up everyone i'm back today is the 25th and i wanted to give you my full review on um, Actor Age Eve Brown by Kai Hibbert. Um, I wanted to at least try to reflect on what I read 
um, last night and, you know, bring my thoughts together um, and to pretty much have a more, like, thought process and to think more intellectually when it comes to the book. And I really, like, I, I give this book a five out of five stars. Um, I feel like this book was more in depth as far as detail, which I really loved. Um, I find that we more we know more about um, about Eve. I know like with her sisters, like with Chloe and with Danny or or Danica, um, we got to know them. But I feel like we knew we got to know Eve a little bit better. Um, we got into the like the root of why she was giving up on things when really like she felt like no one had confidence in her so she felt like why should I have confidence in myself if nobody has confidence in me that I can actually do this and achieve something for, for myself um and then she finds Jacob and Jacob changes her her point of view her her pers her perspective of things and being confident in herself and that she doesn't need anybody else's confidence or approval of that of thinking that she matters because she has to she had to convince herself that she mattered once she can uh, um once she knew that she mattered that's all that, that that's all that mattered you know what I mean and I feel like with Jacob and Eve it was a great mixture of course it was enemies to lovers it was a workplace romance type of thing and I I really, I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed the book. Like, there was some things that had, I felt like I had a really good connection with Eve that I didn't, that I didn't have with the other sisters. Like, don't get me wrong, Chloe and Danica were bomb in their books. They were really bomb and they were cool. But I felt like I connected a little bit more with Eve because she had to prove herself to others. But she also had to prove to herself that she was worth you know worth it and that whatever she could do whatever she put her mind to she could complete it and she could fulfill her duties as opposed to what her family thought that she always gave up on things which she did but then we but we like I said we found the root of the problem of why she was doing that and Jacob was the point was the person that helped her realize those those things about herself and also with Jacob we learned the root of his problem as to why he likes things the way they are because he doesn't want to be abandoned on things like with the relationship with Eve he didn't want to really get into a sexual relationship because once he did he wanted to pretty much he he's confessing um in that act uh, in that sexual act that she is his and he is hers and that he and that Eve is fully his and that she won't go nowhere and that she will never leave him and then we realize the root of the problem of why the way of the way he is is because he was abandoned by his own family they pretty much was telling him he wasn't enough and that you know he wasn't worth you know staying with you know that's why he was adopted by his aunt um and I feel like with that type of abandonment that's why he reacted the way he reacted when Eve left but he sort of told Eve to leave in a sense. I don't want to get much more into detail with the book because I don't want to spoil it that much. You know what I mean? I still want to give y'all some suspense, romantic suspense and everything in the book because it was really good. Um, but yeah, like a lot of the situations when it comes to Eve and Jacob, it was very relatable. Now, I will say, like I said, once again, I love Danica or Danny and I love Chloe, but I felt like I related more to Eve. Um, so yeah but I really love the premise of the story I'm really sad that the the books of the brown sisters are over but hopefully hopefully Talia has something up her sleeve maybe revolving around one of um either Redford or Zoff or even Jacob maybe there's there's a books or something of them that we can go over you know see their perspective on things as far as their families and stuff like that but who knows but like I said I really enjoyed the book I love the perspective of the book as far as Eve finding herself and Jacob um actually trusting people and letting things and going with the flow as opposed to constantly okay check okay this is how it is and this is how I want it to be check okay I want this to be here and once to do that it is complete check it's like he had a checklist of things in order to make sure that he wouldn't get hurt in the process and that he wanted it the way he wanted it to be and the way he wanted to wanted to have it to function as far as his, as far as his bed and breakfast went um but yeah like I said a five out of five stars um Talia Hibbert did her thing um I believe this book comes out 
March, in March, I believe. I think, um, let me, I think it comes out on March, March the 21st. I could be wrong. Let me check. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was right. So March the 21st is when the book is coming out. If you haven't pre-ordered it, I suggest you do so because you don't want to miss out on all the adventures with Eve and with Jacob. And also, if you haven't had the books, um, I know on Talia Hibbert's Instagram and Twitter, um, there is a link where you could have um, all the books signed by her and you can buy, uh, uh, all three books are signed by her and you can, and you can um, buy it in a bundle. Um, so when the third book comes out on the 21st, you'll get all three books and that be, and you can um, pretty much order them. So all of them can be autographed, which I had done that. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep the original copies. I might just do a giveaway for um, the first two books um, since I um, ordered the bundle of three of Get a Life Chloe Brown, um, Take a Hint Danny Brown, and Actor Age Eve Brown. Um, so if I have those all three signed, there's no point in me having the other two. So I might just do a giveaway um, for some people that haven't read these amazing books by Talia Hibbert. They're absolutely amazing and this like literally this book of actor age e brown is amazing i definitely would not want anyone to pass up on this book um because i feel like also there's also an involvement with chloe and danny they are also in this book as well as of course um the brown sisters mom and dad and their grandmother so you still get um some instances where you will um still be um, where pretty much Chloe and Danny are involved with Eve and are concerned with Eve and her future and whatnot. So I do like that, that um, Talia has um, given us a, you know, given us a little bit of Chloe and Danny in this book as well. Um, but that is it, you guys. I really hoped you <laughs> enjoyed my vlog um, of this book. Like I said, um, it comes out March the 21st, so I definitely would recommend you pre-ordering it um, or anything like that just to, just to get in, get your hands on it whenever you can. Um, but like I said, anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Also, hit that subscribe button and that bell to be notified when I upload more videos in the future. But thank you so much for watching, you guys, and please stay healthy and stay safe. See ya!